Bonjour les amis. Kirby Jambon encore. Ça va bien? Ça se plume? Bon. Pleasure to be with you today. We have another lesson in Beginner's Louisiana French. Uh, these past couple of lessons have been, rather than focusing on with a particular document or uh, one of the lessons that I'd prepared, we're simply going through um, many of the words in the LSU Cajun French uh, website, Glossary Francais Anglais. And so if you want to follow along, you can follow along at the LSU Cajun French website using their glossary. And so far we've gone through letters A through O. And, and then uh, I'm not going through every word, but I'm mostly focusing on the terms which are unique in Louisiana French or have some importance or a little special use in Louisiana French. We'll focus on those terms uh, in this lesson as well. And so today we're going to begin with the letter P, letter P. And the first word in the letter P we have is the word pacon or pacon. Try that. Pacon, pacon. A pacon or a pacon, a pacon or a pacon is a pecan, or a, in the north of, of the states they tend to say a pecan, or we don't say pecan in the south. For me, a pecan would be like a like a pochon, you know what I mean? Like a pecan was something you, in the old days, you would put under your bed if you had to, you know, if nature called during the night. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, for me, we don't, we don't say pecan in the south. We do say pecan or pecon, pacon, pacon for the word for a pecan. Uh, the tree is called a paconnier, paconnier, and then a grove of pecan trees is called a paconnière, and paconnière, pacon, paconnier, paconnière. Okay. Um, a nice word we have in Louisiana French. It comes from the English word <laughs> partner, but we we pronounce it padna. Try it, padna, padna. Very good, and it means a friend, like a bud. Uh, pagaye, a pagai is a, a pagai, and pagai is a paddle, and um, since pagaye, pagaye would be to paddle. Pagaye is to paddle. Um, you have the word, the next word they have on the list is payas, and payas is a couple of different meanings. Payas does come from the word pai, which is the word for straw, and so payas could mean a straw mattress, and payas could be a straw mattress. A payas could also be a scarecrow or a clown, and sometimes they, uh, the scarecrows were made with, um, with uh, stuffed with, of course, straw, uh, and payas. We also see the character of a payas in a sense, sometimes uh, like a straw kind of creature, scarecrow, clown kind of picture, sometimes in certain Mardi Gras traditions, and payas. Talk about the word pantalon. Try it. Pantalon. Typically, when we say French, we don't say pantalon. We don't say the "un" sound. I might have addressed this issue in an earlier lesson, but let's review it real quickly. Whenever you have an "on" or an "an" or an "en" ending a syllable in uh, in French, you're gonna have you're gonna have that nasalized sound. And there are three things that can happen in Louisiana French with those sounds. Internationally, it's "un". It stays. It's that sound "un", "un", and you can hear that sound "un" in certain words. But certain certain words, uh, Louisianians prefer to go a different direction with. And for example, um, like in my name, Jean Bon. Now it goes for A M as well. You have to uh, you know specify when you have an A M, A N, E M, E N, O M, O N. All of those are nasal I sounds. They you don't and when it comes at the end of a syllable. So you would, for example, in my name Jean Bon. It's not Jean Bon. You know, it's not Jean. But you don't say the M sound. It's Jean. Bon, Jean. You can pronounce it Jean Bon or Jean Bon. The same sound both. Or, or you can pronounce it Jean Bon, which would be more of like an international pronunciation. Both of those are found in Louisiana French. Okay? With the word pantalon, we don't we typically don't say pantalon, we don't say the un, it becomes an a. And you see that with certain words in Louisiana French, where the we might where it's an A-N or an E-N or an E-M or an E-N, that un sound might go towards a. Or might go towards on, depending on the region. Okay, uh, certain words it almost like pata. I don't know of anyone who actually says pan pan talon like the, with the nasal sound. It's always patalon. Uh, and we don't typically go toward the on with that sound. Nobody says pon talon. Nobody said that way. Like for example, there's an expression as for, which is called tonka. Or we would say taka, like taka toi, as for you. You know, as for. So just a little point of reference about those sounds. Uh, patalon, of course, was a word for pants. Okay, all right. Uh, let's talk about the term pake. Pake is a word which comes from the word pak. Pak is the word for Easter. Uh, it's also the word for Passover in French as well. And we have the expression pake des oeufs or pake des oeufs, 
We sometimes will say des oeufs or des oeufs, depending on us. Des oeufs is more international, but you hear it in Louisiana French as well. And also in Louisiana French, we say des oeufs for the plural of egg. And paquet des oeufs, packing eggs, it means it's a little practice of a little game for Easter where you tap the eggs together and the ones who, um, for a little competition to win some eggs. And uh, it's happened, it's usually, typically in the south central, southwestern parts of the state, you find that. And of course, the egg that breaks is the one that loses in that idea. Talk about the term parapor, parapor, parapor. It's like two words, par, rapor. And parapor is typically used in Louisiana French as almost a synonym for parce, um, like because, or a synonym for, um, you know, like a um, cause, de, um, in, um, due to, because of. You'll hear it as, um, par exemple, parapor que, with a subordinate, you know, like as a subordinate clause, so uh, because of. Um, let's talk about the word pare. Pare is the word we use meaning to ready. We don't, for ready. We don't typically use the word pre or pret uh, in the feminine form. We say pare. We mentioned that before. It's one of those nautical terms we use. To bet is parier. For example, if I say, um, I bet you, I would say je te parie, parier. Um, let's talk about the word um, paroisse. Paroisse is the word for parish. And of course, in Louisiana, our governmental divisions are not de comté, not counties, but our parishes, de paroisse, just like a church parish in paroisse d'un église. Okay. Uh, let's talk about a couple of other words here. How about the word patassa? Very good Louisiana word. Patassa is the word for, um, uh, some people would refer to it as a sunfish or a brim or a perch, um, depending on um, or uh, in, Louis in what type of area you're from or to describe this type of fish. But it's the word, we call it the word patassa. Okay, patat. Let's talk about the word patat. Patat again is the word we use for a potato. Now, in certain regions of the state, and patat is typically a sweet potato, and a potato, like an Irish potato, is a pomme de terre. Okay, in other regions, um, and patat is the general word for a potato, and patat anglaise, English potato, is actually an Irish potato, and then patat douce is a sweet potato. So it de depends on the region of the state. And I've noticed that as well, like for example, when I traveled to, um, when I was in France, or the first time I was in France, staying with someone in, in uh, La Rochelle, and he says, oh, j'ai des patates pour toi, and it wasn't des patates douces, it wasn't sweet potatoes, it was some, it was white potatoes, you know, uh, des patates anglaises, we would say, and he called that des patates as well. So it all depends on, uh, again, it's a regional thing internationally, it could be a regional thing as far, it is a regional thing in Louisiana French as well. Uh, where I'm from, we would say, we, we typically didn't use the word pomme de terre. All right. Let's talk about, uh, that's a good word, um, uh, pot, P-A-T-T-E, pot. Uh, pat and pat is the word we used for, you typically use for a paw or the foot or the leg of an animal in pot. But as a result, we also use it, um, we also use it in, to describe people as well in times. For example, that's what I would say, the ma pat gauche. Uh, you know, it'd be like my left foot or my left leg. Okay, ma pat droite, my right foot, my right leg. Okay, so, um, pat, you'll hear it, you said, je me casse en pat. Je me casse en pat, that means I broke broke my leg. You know, je me casse en pat. Rather than say je me casse en jambe, it would say je me casse en pat. I broke my leg. Um, so you have pat used that way. For example, your expression, a, a cat pat. A cat pat. But a strane a cat pat means like to crawl on, on your hands and knees on all four on all four feet, you could say, all four paws, you know, sense. Um, you know, he was dead, uh, four feet in the air, so pot is typically used for animals, but we use it by extension in different areas dealing with people as well. Uh, just the word pov, we don't typically say, say pov, we more, most more often pov, you have more of an awesome pov, you have that word. Uh, pomort, pomort is the word we use, uh, pomort is the word we use for dandruff, it literally means dry skin, so la pomort. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about the word, just in general, just for those of you, um, the word pêche, because uh, sometimes it gets, uh, it gets misunderstood, but it is the same pronunciation. La pêche, la pêche is fishing. Uh, je vais à la pêche, it means I'm go, going fishing. You can say je vais pêcher, which is the verb to fish, but typically we say we're going to the act of fishing, la pêche. Like we would say je vais à la chasse, I'm going to the hunt. I'm going to the hunting, I'm going to the fishing, la pêche. But pêche is also the word for peach as well, all right? Pêche, the word to, is to fish. Pêche is the word to sin, so be careful with those two. All right, a pan, P-E-I-N-E, pan. Pan is the word for pain, and we typically use a pan, 
uh, in an expression, for example, ça me fait de la peine. It means, um, means um, that, that hurts me. But the way we'd say I'm sorry. We don't typically use very often uh, the international expression, uh, je, je suis désolé. We would typically say pardon in a, in, a very, in a more common everyday sense. In a more serious sense, ça me fait de la peine. I'm sorry. It, it means it pains me, it hurts me. Uh, another expression that we use is ça vaut la peine. Ça vaut la peine, which means it literally means it's it's uh, it's it's worth the pain. So it's, it means it's worth it. Ça vaut la peine in that expression. Okay. And pelican, y'all know that's a state bird of Louisiana. And pelican. Plot, plot. La plot is the word we use for any type of ball, um, whether in a sol solid ball or a hard ball. Plot, typically in international French, would be used like for a ball of yarn, perhaps. Uh, you would have a ball of string. You might say in plot. Um, for a ball filled with air, you would, they normally would say in ballon. For a solid ball, you would simply say in ball. But for us, they're all, they plot. Any, I mean, that means any kind of ball that you would play with as a game, as a sport, okay? Not, for example, everything shaped like a ball. For example, like food ways, you would typically use the term uh, boule or boulette, depending on how big it was, you know? Uh, for example, a boulette de viande for meatballs, you know, we used to have that, and boulette de chevrette, and these are little, kind of little balls of shrimp that you would cook as well. Uh, and boule, uh, boule would be used for bigger balls, like in boule, boule de neige, it would be like a snowball, you know. Uh, and boule tac tac were these old, uh, were these like these sugared popcorn balls that we used to have, uh, we still have sometimes as well. Uh, so plot is the word that we use, uh, la plot. Okay. Just to let you I know, I know in certain regions of Canada, it means something quite different. So um, if you're venturing over to Canada, just be aware of the fact that they might not be the same meaning. And you can have, maybe it'll come up in discussion and you might find it quite humorous or maybe embarrassing, but it's okay. <laughs> These things happen. Uh, let's talk about the word. Um, next word I want to talk about is the word uh, petit. Petit we typically pronounce as petit often, often sounds just as t. A lot of times we think, and we can just abbreviate as T, for example, uh, you can say un petit chien. But most of the time what you're hearing, you're hearing is this, un petit chien, un petit chien. We have a little P sound there. That's because, as I talked about before, that unaccented E's tend to be dropped, okay? Un petit chien. So, but if you're beginning the sentence, you might just say T. Like I said, but that's why we have names like a T-boy, T-jean, and, um, and uh, T-boog. You know, you'll hear these different things, T, this and that. Um, T refers to little. And, uh, and sometimes the p is dropped, petit. Um, now, sometimes what happens in certain expressions, uh, petit uh, becomes piti. Actually, you might, instead of dropping the e, you might, the chant becomes piti, les piti. It means the little ones. Les petits ou les piti could both mean the kids, the little ones as well. So you have that. The feminine var version is tit, tit, ma petite, like ma petit, mon petit garçon, mon petit garçon, or mon petit garçon, meaning my little boy. Ma petite fille, ma petite fille, uh, ma petite fille, or ma petite fille, you might hear tit or tit, uh, tit fille, which would mean my little girl. Uh, typically, those terms don't refer to granddaughter and grandson in Louisiana French. They refer to your little girl, your little boy. Okay? When we want to say a grandchild, we mentioned that before, that would be mon petit enfant, petit enfant, grandchild. Uh, okay, let's go on to the word pias, pias, uh, or piastre, the way it's written, but we don't pronounce the ori. Pias is the word we use for dollar, and it is an old French word. You found it on old money that used to be printed in New Orleans. It used to be written di pias, you know, di pias, ten dollars on the bills that was printed there. Uh, pias. Um, uh, picot. La picot is the word we use uh, for chicken pox. La picot. The picot word used for chicken pox. Okay. Uh, when we talk about piment, we're talking about piment is the word we use for peppers, like typically hot peppers or bell peppers. Like bell peppers would be called les piments doux because they're not, not they're not as uh, peppery, not as spicy. Uh, but they, but hot peppers, peppery peppers in a sense, we go, they're called des piments forts, des piments forts, des piments doux, des piments forts, like uh, you know mild peppers and strong peppers. So piment is the word. There's an old game that we used to play as a kid. It was called Pan Pipo. And it's kind of like eeny, meeny, miny, mo almost, but a little different. There's a little game you play with your fan Pan Pipo and you would do these little fingers. Um, and pistache. Pistache, we might have mentioned that before, but a pistache is a the word we use for a peanut. It pr probably comes from an expression pistache de terre, which meant earth pistachio. Uh, if you can imagine, perhaps the French folks got here, looked like pistachios grown in the earth. They call them earth pistachios, pistache de terre. We don't typically use the words uh, that you might hear internationally like um, arachide ou cacahuete. 
And we don't typically use those words. In fact, I have to share with you a story. Uh, one of my friends who was a French teacher, she, one of the kids one time in her class was asking, he says, teacher, how do you say, how do you say a peanut butter in French? And so she went, she said it in international French and she goes, well, you could say probably a beurre de cacahuète. And the little guy goes, caca, wet. Peanut butter off my list, baby. <laughs> That's, so, so, no, we don't say cacao, but we do say pistache. Pistache. All right. Uh, let's talk about a couple of other words. We have the word for, and plaquemine. Plaquemine is the word for a parish and a town in Louisiana. Plaquemine, plaquemine. But plaquemine is the name referred to a persimmon, the a fruit that we find in Louisiana. The fruit tree is called the uh, uh, plaquemine. You have that. Uh, Plant, plant is the word that we use. It means uh, full, but what you also can you mean to a lot, of, a lot of, you know, Johnny, uh, Johnny plant. I have means I have a lot. But I mean, plant is also full. It's uh, no, il est, no, no, le, um, la faire la bas plan. That means it's that thing over there is full. But mais j'en ai plein. That means like I have a lot. Okay. Plume. Now plume is the word for a um, plume is the word for a a feather like on a bird. Plume and feather. And plume is also the word, but also the word we use for a pen, like an ink. As we would say in, ink, in Louisiana English, we would call it an ink pen. So one of my friends from the North said, why do you call it an ink pen? Because, well, to distinguish it from a lead pen. Because, and other people said, no, it's called a lead pencil. No, we call it a lead pen and an ink pen where I grew up, you know. But no, and the guy said, well, no, we call it a mechanical pencil. He said, I'd never heard that before in my life, I told him. <laughs> and really, I had never heard before in my life of that term. We call it an ink pen and a lead pen. Okay. But uh, so, but a pen is the word for in plume. But plume is the word we use for in pen, which is you can recall in plume stylo. Uh, they, they might say internationally was those pens that you would dip into ink to use it to write with, you know. But it is also the word for feather. And so we do have words that sometimes mean the same thing. You know, um, there's an old story too about another word, two words that mean the same thing, and this is the same thing no, no, more, no matter where you are in the world. And that is the word voler. Uh, voler in French uh, means to to uh, fly or it means to steal. So uh, voler means to fly or to steal and then plume means a feather or a pen that you write with. And there was a joke one of my kids told me, one of the first jokes I heard one of the kids told me, tell me in French, and miss, he goes, Monsieur Jambon, tu connais la différence entre un avocat et un caron cro? Got it? Monsieur Jambon, what's the difference between an avocat which is a lawyer, and Caron Crow, which is a buzzard. <laughs> and so I said, and he, and he said, and Caron, an avocat and un Caron Crow. Un Caron Crow a besoin de toutes ses plumes, toutes ses plumes pour voler. Un Caron Crow a besoin de toutes ses plumes pour voler. A, a buzzard needs all of his feathers in order to fly. And he said, an avocat a besoin de juste une plume pour voler. He said, a lawyer needs only one plume in order to voler. However, in this sense, the plume does not mean the feathers, it means a pen. And in this sense, the voler does not mean to fly, it means to steal. So no offense to lawyers, my daughter works for a law firm, no offense to lawyers, but it's just a joke that he told me, I always thought it was really cute. All right, let's continue. Uh, plume, plume, of course, plume means to pluck feathers. And the expression we talked about before, sas plume, which means how's the feathers plucking, are the feathers are plucking good, and so. Um, let's talk about the word plus or pu or plus, and we could get, that's a little bit more advanced, but we'll just, just to talk about it a little general, in, in general. Um, the word spelled P-L-U-S can mean a couple different things in French, depending on how it's used. And it could mean plus, when it's pronounced plus or plus in Louisiana French, it means more, all right? Uh, il est plus content, which means he is, he is happier, all right? Uh, all right? Um, j'en veux plus. Uh, I want more, okay? Uh, so plus or plus, pronounced that way. But when it's pronounced pu, when the L is silent and the S is silent, it means no more, okay? For example, il est plus content, it means he's happier. Il est plus content, it means he's no longer happy. Okay, so it's a little thing you'll see in, in, in different expressions, okay? Uh, the term for uh, body hair is called poil or poil, poil or poil, depending on your region where it's pronounced. All right, another word we have here. Let's talk about uh, the word, ooh, what's a good word? Portrait, portrait is a good word. Portrait is the word we use for a picture or an image. In fact, portrait, we use it in general for all types of pictures, whether it's a painting, whether it's a photograph, 
we say in portrait. It's not just a portrait of a person. It can mean any type of picture. It's also used in, in some cases for like movies, but because you know they used to call them moving pictures. I'm going to go to the picture show. So les portraits. So you have that as well. Okay. Um, let's talk about the word pour. Pour, P O U R, means for, but it also can mean for the purpose of doing something. Okay. And, it, and if it's followed by avoir, and for example, uh, you would say, par exemple, j'ai um, j'ai pour aller au magasin. J'ai pour aller à la boutique. Magasin, boutique, two words meaning a store. J'ai pour aller à la grocery, grocery store. And pour, so j'ai pour, which is avoir pour, which means have for, but it means, it means I'm obligated to go, I need to go, I have to go. All right? We use it in that sense as well. As well. Uh, let's talk about another word unique to Louisiana French. Um, an old French term you might still hear used, this word prétendu. Prétendu was the word used to mean a suitor, a boyfriend, uh, someone who wants to, um, who wants to perhaps date or even marry some uh, someone. Uh, let's see, pri. Let's talk about the word pri. Pri is the past tense of the word pron, and and so pron is the verb to take. But when you also, it also means when you use it in the past tense, it also means to be stuck. All right. So you see, uh, uh, so to be so uh, in a bad situation, je suis mal pris. I'm, I'm I'm in a bad situation. Il est, je suis pris dans la boue. I'm stuck in the mud. Something like that. Okay. Uh, in some regions, instead of using the word nettoyer to mean to clean, they'll use the word propte, propte, which means to, which comes from the word prop, which is also clean as well. So you might hear propte as well as nettoyer, meaning to clean. All right. Uh, let's talk about the word puce. Puce is the word for a flea, but we also have a plant called lave à la puce, which would mean which would mean flea grass in a sense, and that's where the word we use for poison ivy, lave à la puce. All right. Um, and let's talk about uh, this word here. We're going to go to Q right now, letter Q. We're talking about the word qualité. Uh, I just heard, uh, listening to the radio this um, this weekend, and uh, my uh, my former student, uh, uh, Monsieur Zach Fusillier, does a program, wonderful program in KRVS, and he was talking about, he said, toute qualité, toute qualité, meaning all kinds. We use the word term, term qualité to mean kind. Uh, you may hear the term sort or tip. These are words that meaning type or kind. But we, you hear the word qualité used a lot, very often in Louisiana French, more often qualité used. Um, and not, another word, which is um, an old French term for la date, or the date, is the word contième. You'd hear that used sometimes as well, la contième pour la date. Okay? Um, we, quelque is the way we pronounce quelque, which, which means some, or uh, uh, like quelqu'un, quelqu'un, or quelqu'un. Quelqu'un becomes quelqu'un very often, quelqu'un, or quelqu'un. And that would be someone, quelque chose, something, quelque part, somewhere, you know. Um, for example, tout quelqu'un, tout quelqu'un would be everybody, okay. Quelqu'un, somebody, tout quelqu'un, everybody. So you have that. Uh, again, going back to that term, qui, we used that, we talked about that in an earlier lesson in questions, qui, Q-U-I. Qui, Q-U-I, uh, qui can mean pretty much, pretty much means everywhere, it does mean who, but in about, about one third of the state, qui also means what. Okay, so uh, so it's very aware of that fact. So, for example, the region where I'm from, you know, key is the word we use for what as well. And some regions, like for example, along the Bayou Tesh, um, in Hinville Platte, pl different regions like that, you will hear the word key used as a word instead of quoi, instead of the word quoi for what, you'll hear that as well. And quoi, of course, is a word for what. And one thing different from Louisiana, from international friendship with quoi, is that, uh, for example, internationally, to ask someone what is it, you would say qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce que c'est, qu'est-ce que. Um, and, and, or you could say c'est quoi. C'est quoi. Uh, however, in Louisiana French, it's the opposite. It's quoi c'est. And you hear that in old Acadian French as well. Quoi c'est. Quoi c'est rather than c'est quoi. Quoi c'est. And in those key regions, you'll hear qui c'est. Okay, so quoi c'est ça could mean what is that. Qui c'est que ça could be what is that as well. So you might hear those as well. And then the final uh, thing, quoi faire, or the what could mean what to do. But when when you pronounce when it's pronounced quoi faire very often, quoi faire, spelled like quoi faire, it means another word for why. Quoi faire, another word for pourquoi. Okay. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. We're going to conclude uh, this series with the glossary in our next video. I hope you have a great day and uh, please, um, um, you know, subscribe to the, the channel and you'll continue to get updates as soon as I can, I put them out. Join our Facebook group and uh, ask any questions you might have, make any suggestions. It's my pleasure to do this for you. And as I tell you very often, soignez-vous autres et soignez les autres. En passe-voir. Au revoir.